Hi, welcome to Mythologist. So today is a really special day for me because I am finally making a cocktail that I've been thinking about for a while now. And that cocktail is a cocktail inspired by the movie Deep Blue Sea. Why Deep Blue Sea, you might say? Why would anyone want a cocktail inspired by a movie about genetically engineered sharks who kill people? And here's why, I love that movie. It's actually one of my favorite movies that ever, really. Probably because I saw it about 20 times on an airplane in Australia. And when you watch a movie that many times, it sort of burns into your brain. I know all the lines from it. I get really angry when I watch other people's reviews of that movie because they obviously weren't paying attention. They always say, oh, she made the, you know, she did that to the sharks because her mother had Alzheimer's. No, watch the movie. Did you even watch the movie? At the beginning, she clearly says, my father had Alzheimer's. Every day I had to, he'd ask where my mother was and I had to tell him and he took it, that she was dead and he took it like a car wreck. 80,000 Americans, blah, 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 right? She made it for her father. She's in, this is my other thing. I don't think she's a bad person, personally. I think that she was trying to do a good thing. It's the sharks that were bad. They took their knowledge, their incredible brain power that she gave them and used it for evil instead of good. They ate people. Their goal was to escape. Now you might argue their animalistic side was taking over and that's why they wanted to be free. And so they were, you know, really escaping slavery or something like that because they were being used for medical experiments. But I honestly think the sharks are the evil and I don't think she should have died at the end. Okay, and also I think the sharks should have had names. Um, they didn't have names, they were just Gen 1, Gen 2. Rennie Harlan said in the behind the scenes interviews that he purposefully took out anything emotional uh, in the movie. So for example, Janice, who was the one who was involved with the, with the guy who lost his arm, she was supposed to be pregnant in the movie. But he took that out because she dies and he didn't want people to get overly emotionally attached to the characters. Also, apparently in the test screenings, people did react better to Saffron Burroughs dying than staying alive. But I remember being upset about that when I first saw the movie and honestly, it still upsets me now because I don't think she was a bad person. You could almost look at that movie as sort of a Frankenstein's monster kind of thing. Right, she, she fucked with the sharks and then the sharks fucked with them. And that's pretty much what happened in Frankenstein, yeah? I mean, Frankenstein, you know, took, made this, created this creature that shouldn't have existed really because we shouldn't fuck with sharks, honestly. Nothing good can come from that. But uh, ultimately this creature that he created destroyed him. And that's essentially what happened here, right? She created these, super smart sharks to get to harvest the protein complex. Then the sharks ate everybody. Um, and so yeah, a lot of people die, but again, it's an action slash horror movie. So people have to die. That, that's the uh, definition of that. Okay, anyway, don't worry. You'll get plenty more Deep Blue Sea thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings about this movie um, as People who know me will tell you I, I can talk about it for a long time. I mean, the point of this video obviously is to make a cocktail. So I won't, you know, bore you too much with my thoughts and feelings about that movie. Now, as I'm making this cocktail, I will be saying lines from the movie because I've learned a lot from that movie. That movie has taught me a lot about the Bible, about sharks, about things in general. I do often say quotes from that movie just normally in everyday life. Okay, so what, what goes into a deep blue sea cocktail? Um, I decided to use vodka because vodka doesn't have any flavor really, but it's, um, it's good for as a cocktail base because it, it, you know, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. It won't take over. Obviously I need blue curacao because the movie's called Deep Blue Sea. I will be putting some lemon juice in there 
to give it some citrus flavor. And then after I shake it with ice, I'll be putting it, straining it into my coupe glass and topping it with grenadine. The reason being, blood in the water. If you've seen the movie, which I hope you have, if you haven't, what are you even doing with your life? Uh, you've made bad choices, go fix that. Anyway, grenadine. Because if you've seen the movie, at the very beginning, this teddy bear falls into the water with wine, and the wine is like, you know, blood in the water, right? But also, people die and there's blood. So, blood in the water. And finally, I'll be topping this wonderful, wonderful cocktail off with shark fin ice cubes. Because I love sharks, I love Shark Week. I actually own about three shark fin t-shirts, I think three. Which you might say, nobody needs three shark fin t-shirts, but you'd be wrong. I love sharks. I don't though, I hate them. I mean, they terrify me, but I love learning about them because, I don't know, it's a weird fascination with this terrifying thing. So, and not all of them are terrifying, obviously. They're in their sharks, they're supposed to be quite nice. There's uh, whale sharks that are totally harmless. Um, you know, there are a lot of sharks that are actually not, not that bad, but then there are ones that are really bad. And so if you're watching this and you don't know anything about sharks, just basically stay out of the ocean. Um, especially if you're in Hawaii or Australia or New Zealand, New, Ze New Zealand, South Africa, Brazil, because there are bull sharks and there are tiger sharks and they will eat you. Okay, now we're gonna try to open this vodka. Alright, well that was a very satisfying sound. Usually I put about two shots of whatever the main alcohol is since I'm putting blue curacao in as well though and that's a liqueur. I'm only going to do one and a half shots of vodka. It's 24%. That's not bad. So, but uh, still I'm going to cut down on this vodka. Okay, shot. Shot. And a half. So what have I learned from that movie? Because I mentioned that earlier, but I didn't actually tell you what I learned. For example, there was a question on trivia the other night, uh, can sharks swim backwards? And the first words out of my mouth were, that's impossible, sharks don't swim backwards, they can't. You know where I learned that? Deep Blue Sea. I also learned that about Daniel and the lion from Deep Blue Sea. Do I know the actual story? No, but I know that when a preacher is in his oven being cooked, he says, Daniel with the lion. So I appreciate the irony, Lord. Cook dies, I'm not Daniel with the lion. So I appreciate the irony, Lord. Cook dies in his own oven. But, well, I've got other plans. So I'm assuming it has something to do with, you know, irony and something. And then there's, of course, his fabulous line at the end of the movie when they're uh, trying to get out of Aquatica where he says, yay, though I walk through the valley of death, blah, 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 blah. I am, I carry a big stick and I'm a mean motherfucker. One, de two demon fish down, one to go. Can I get an amen? So I also say that quite often. That's literally the only uh, prayer, I guess, that I know from Christianity. So uh, no, nothing against Christianity. I am, I'm just Jewish, so I just learned that stuff. Okay. So, but I went to Catholic school, so there you go. Okay, so we got half a shot of the blue curacao, and we're gonna squeeze this lovely fruit into this cocktail. <clears throat> I may have to use my other thing because this is a pretty big one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, guys. I'm going to switch to my other juicer. Um, just I'm not getting as much juice from this as I know I could. And that's simply because um, it's a big lemon and that thing can't handle it. Okay, so clearly not everything in the movie is, is true or correct because um, 
Mako sharks probably don't reach 8,000 pounds. I mean, maybe they do, but they're kind of small and fast, so I really don't think so. But in the movie, Samuel L. Jackson does say, you know, what does an 8,000 pound Mako shark with the, a brain the size of a V8 flat engine and no natural predators think about? And, you know, Scoggins is like, I'm not hanging out here to find out, right? But then later, uh, they say, I believe it's Carter says, I know the answer to the riddle. Because what an 8,000 pound Mako shark with no predators thinks about is freedom, the deep blue sea. So they tie everything back. It's very wonderful. So I'm actually gonna pour this through here because I don't want the seeds to go in. Likely they wouldn't have come out through this strainer, but just in case. Okay, so I'm putting about three or four ice cubes in. Now there is actually a scene in the movie where LL Cool J makes drinks for everybody. Um, I believe that's the part when Samuel Jackson tell, you know, oh, you're that guy. Yeah, I'm that guy. You know, black people have enough problems without going out to the middle of, you know, nowhere to big ass, climbing a big ass mountain. We've got enough problems, brother. And having watched my previous videos myself, I know I make funny faces while I shake. If I look weird, it's just apparently my shaking face, so. Okay, now we're gonna strain this into here. And it should be a lovely blue color, perfect. Man, that's gorgeous, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna do the grenadine or the blood in the water. But just let's appreciate this for a second, how pretty and blue that is. Just so pretty. Could be a little deeper bluer, but uh, the curacao was diluted by the ice, by the vodka, and by the lemon juice. So that's why it's not as deep blue sea-ish as it should be. But it's blue, and that's what I was going for. Now there are different kinds of grenadine out there. Um, like Liver, Liver & Co. It says real grenadine. They do put cane sugar in. The first ingredient is pomegranate juice. But this one is also good, this Angostura one, because um, it pretty much has the same ingredients. So I would say either one is fine. Um, I'm going to use the Angostura today for this drink because I can. And I just feel like I need to make a call out to Susan McAllister here in, in the scene where she cuts her hand and says, she may be the smartest animal on earth, but she's still just an animal. Which also brings me to the fact that the first gen shark is clearly a female, which is interesting. I'm gonna guess that the second gen were males because, you know, the way they hunt and stuff just made me think they were two juvenile male sharks that were just fucking, well, screwing with people. Um, but again, none of the sharks have names and I probably would have named them all Walter because that's my favorite name. So let's put the grenadine in, see what happens. The blood in the water. Oh, look at that guys, look at that. That's gorgeous. Oh my God, so perfect. Yes, the blood in the water. And see how it floated to the bottom? It's, ah, oh, this is just amazing. And the reason this floated to the bottom, in case you're interested in cocktail chemistry, is because of the sugar in it. The higher the alcoholic content, the more something is going to float. So that's why all the alcohol is at the top and the grenadine's at the bottom. Because the grenadine is basically sugar and fruit juice. Um, and vodka is a very high alcohol content and it's mixed with blue curacao and lemon juice. So there's no sugar in, or very little sugar in that part. So that's why it's floating. Um, all right, last final step is to get those shark fin ice cubes. So they didn't totally turn into ice cubes, but I mean, to be fair, I didn't give them that much time to turn into ice cubes. So, so they don't totally look like shark fins, which is a little sad, but it's okay. We have circles instead. Um, so we'll just put the circles in. But normally they would be these shark fins. And I got these at uh, Kitchen Caboodle. I got them at Kitchen Caboodle. That may be an organ specific place, I'm not sure. Anyway, this is our deep blue sea cocktail. Um, again, it was vodka, blue curacao, and grenadine. 
Uh, she probably tastes it to make sure that it's edible. And um, so let's do that. It's not bad. I'm gonna stir it around a bit because I'm not getting any of the sweetness from the grenadine, probably because it floated to the bottom. So I'm gonna stir this around a bit, try to get more of a mix here. And that is working. Now we'll try it. It could be that it needs more of a sweetening element, which, you know. Now it's delicious. Okay. So my recommendation is, if you're making it for other people, do the grenadine, let it float to the bottom so you get that cool blend the water effect, but then stir it around and make it completely grenadine bloody. Um, because then you'll get the sweetness from the grenadine and it brings everything together. The flavors are really good. It's, um, it's perfect. I think it's a really good cocktail. And much like the movie, it's uh, it's just, well, the movie's amazing. I don't know if this cocktail's amazing, but it's not bad for a cocktail I just invented like two days ago. So, um, it's hard to put into words how much that movie means to me, it's hard. I watch it every year. I haven't actually watched it yet, but it's also, it's a great Halloween movie. So, you know, if you're looking for a movie to watch Really, no, you know what, it's a year-round movie. It's a year-round movie, but you could watch it for Halloween um, because, you know, it's scary. I've seen it like, what, 300 times and it still scares me. Um, certain parts of it still freak me out, but I'm trying to think of more wisdom I can, or I've gathered from that movie. And I think there's just a lot there. There's a lot going on under the surface, ha ha ha, right? It's deeper than it seems. But it's a really good movie and it's it's just great and it's the best. Okay, um, cheers.